What's up everybody, Ben here with Fly Plugins and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to create an e-learning presentation that doesn't suck. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I've, I've seen many presentations uh, over the course of the last few years. Some of the presentations have been uh, painful to watch. And so what I want to do today is I want to cover uh, a few aspects of how a presentation should work. I'm also going to cover how to create your slide deck. I'm going to get into some technical uh, aspects of it. I'm also going to get into some of the philosophies behind some of your slides and what, what you should be doing during your presentation. Um, then I'm going to wrap it up by showing how to, how to deliver your presentation and embed it into your course so that you have an awesome e-learning presentation. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, so what are we going to cover today? Today we're going to cover four primary topics. We're going to cover a planning phase of your presentation. We're going to cover um, the technicalities behind building your slide deck, some philosophies that go along with that. We're going to talk about uh, various aspects of recording your presentation, um, both software-wise, hardware-wise, like what do you actually need? What tools do you need to record your presentation? Uh, and then how do you serve up your presentation? You know, how do you deliver that on your course? So uh, these are the items we're going to be covering today. And so let's go ahead and just get started here. Okay, so we're going to talk about the planning phase. That's the first part of creating a presentation before you even think about opening up a PowerPoint or keynote presentation to start building slides. You need to plan your presentation. Okay, the best way to do this, uh, at least in my opinion, is to pull out the old pen and paper and write a storyboard for your presentation. Creating the actual slide deck comes later in the process of creating your e-learning presentation. My second favorite method for planning is a mind map. Mind mapping allows you to start off with a single key idea and then you can branch off into subtopics and subtopic details. Um, and the really cool part about mind mapping is you can totally take your topics and reorganize them and restructure them um, because what you're going to find is you're going to be creating uh, subtopics and details and sometimes they don't quite fit in this particular area and you find that you have to move things around and using a mind map makes it really easy. Now, uh, the mind mapping tool that I use, it's a SaaS product, it's called mindmeister.com. And uh, I don't remember what the pricing is on this. I know you get the first mind map for free, uh, but it's totally worth uh, using the subscription to have unlimited mind maps. Let's talk about some logistics for building your slide deck. Okay, there's gonna be some key concepts that you need to know before creating your actual slide deck. What are the tools? What, what, do, we, what do we need to create a slide deck? Okay, so first of all, uh, in WordPress, you cannot take a keynote or a PowerPoint presentation and directly embed it into WordPress. Um, WordPress is just not designed for that. Um, well, and neither are the, uh, uh, the software for keynote and PowerPoint. They're not engineered for you to just embed those on the web. It's not just a WordPress issue. It's, it's web in general. Um, but what you can do is record your keynote or PowerPoint um, narration style just like I'm doing with this presentation. Now there's also another tool called Prezi. Prezi is a SaaS tool, allows you to create slides online and it's really cool. It has some really cool effects, um, does some really cool things. Uh, I've used it before in a couple of presentations. Uh, it's a bit pricey in my opinion, um, but it, it does some really cool things. Animoto is another one. Animoto is more for creating maybe a, a picture presentation um, but it, it's another tool that I've used in the past and it works very well. It's time to build, but hold on just a second. I want to talk about a couple of things that I don't want you to do when you create your slides. Okay, so as you see, this particular slide has a lot going on. Um, so the first point on this is don't use the clip art that comes with your uh, particular application. You know, PowerPoint I know comes with uh, native clip art sometimes. I'm not quite sure if Keynote does or not. Um, however, don't use uh, the native clip art uh, because those those clip art pieces tend to be used quite often. They're not unique. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit later uh, in the presentation about what kind of images you should be using. Um, but for now, yeah, don't use clip art. Um, <clears throat> also, avoid adding too much into a single slide. You don't want a lot of clutter, as you can see in this slide. 
there's way too much going on. It totally takes the focus off what I'm saying. In fact, you're probably trying to read this slide right now, uh, and you actually should be listening to what I'm saying, not actually reading the slide. Okay, so yeah, we want to make sure we keep the focus of our audience. We don't want them um, sitting there reading word for word everything that's on the slide. Okay, another thing I'm going to be talking about here shortly uh, is is the selection of fonts. Okay, you want to use a font that's easy to read. Also, you want to make sure that you pick a good contrasting color for your font because you don't want it to uh, appear like the font blends in with the background and makes it really difficult to read because again, we're going to lose the audience's focus and the point of this is to teach and not uh, have them lose focus. Okay, so and again, um, one thing that I notice uh, time and time again when I see presentations uh, with, a, with a slide deck is presenters typically uh, try to use their slide as presenter notes, okay? Um, a slide is not intended to be presenter notes. It's supposed to be a visual aid in helping uh, teach or communicate whatever it is that you're teaching or communicating. Uh, and the last point on this slide, uh, don't use too many bullets. I think I saw an acronym uh, recently. It's called the infinite bullet point syndrome. <laughs> so don't get IBPS. Um, too many bullets on a slide will, again, will uh, take focus away and you will lose your audience at some point. One thing I also want to recommend when it comes to building your slide deck is not to use the built-in templates. So now I know Keynote and both PowerPoint, uh, they come with templates that you can use for your slides that are um, prefixed with, um, you know, background colors, fonts, font colors, etc. Um, so my recommendation is to customize your slide template, okay? In both Keynote and PowerPoint, as far as I know, you have the ability to create custom templates for your slides, okay? So please don't use the default templates. Why? Because everyone uses them and you want your presentation to be unique. Another reason is you want it to be branded. So if you notice, all my slides have been branded. Uh, you'll see my logo on the lower right hand corner. You see my website, my Twitter handle, they're, they're branded. So they're not, I'm not using uh, a template. And if you'll notice, my template is, is nothing super fancy. Um, you can obviously get really fancy with your template. Um, but the point of this is to create a unique template uh, that's branded. Okay, so you may even have some company colors that you would introduce into the background uh, or into, into the fonts, etc. Branding your presentation will also keep others from stealing and repurposing your presentation that you've spent hours creating, okay? Because I know it, creating a presentation uh, is not something that you can whip out in five minutes, at least a presentation that's going to provide value. All right, so let's talk about fonts. When it comes to fonts, most people would love to get super fancy when, it, when the reality is that simpler fonts are the easiest to read, okay? So some of the, some of the easiest fonts uh, to read are Arial, Helvetica, Gil Sans. I think Calibri is a pretty easy one. Uh, any sans serif font is a really easy font to read. Now, when it comes to headings, you can get decorative. However, you still want to ensure that the font is readable. Okay, you don't want to get some crazy heading font like Wingdings or something crazy where uh, you just cannot read what the what the heading says. I mean, the point of this again is to teach and to communicate, uh, and so you want to do in such a manner that it's easy for uh, your audience or your viewer, your student, to consume the information. So another uh, factor is color. Okay, you want to make sure that your font has a good contrast and doesn't wash out in the background. So if you notice. I have good contrasting in, in, in a yellow and green, and perhaps they're not the greatest looking shades of green and yellow, but then you see the blue color for the word color, and that totally washes out against the background. And so when you're presenting, uh, it's really difficult to read, and again, you're gonna pull focus away from what you're saying, and you're gonna <laughs> really force the user to look at that word, focus on it, and read it, as opposed to listening and using your slide as a visual aid. So, uh, yeah, make sure uh, we just want to simplify the learning experience for the student, uh, not just look cool, okay? Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about enhancing your slides, okay? Um, <clears throat> one really cool thing that you, that you can do on your slides is add pictures. So I know I've, I've already kind of mentioned don't use, don't use the clip art, um, but what you can do is use 
RF images, okay? Royalty-free images, okay? If you don't know what royalty-free images are, you can Google it, uh, you can Wikipedia it. Basically, just means that you pay a license for an image and you can use it uh, on your website um, based on the license it comes with. Obviously, you need to you need to research it, um, but you can use these images on your website or your videos or your presentations, etc. Okay, these are a few of my favorite websites that I've used uh, to to purchase uh, RF images. One two three RF is probably the most common one I've used. Pixabay, I believe, has a lot of free stock images. Pond5, I believe, has some freebies, and uh, I believe Graphic River does as well. But these are some uh, websites that you can go and purchase um, images. Okay, so when, when you're creating your, your presentation, um, one thing I like to do in all of our presentations is create an intro and outro video. Um, again, it can help with branding. Uh, you can add your logo. It just makes your video look professional. Okay, so intromaker.net, make some pretty decent intro outro videos at a very reasonable price um, and they're customizable so you can you can add your logo or company name uh, you can even make your own homemade intro video by creating a couple of branded slides in powerpoint and keynote and recording it uh, and then you can add you know some background music etc and another place that you can get um, some royalty free videos is a place on the internet called Video Hive by Envato, just another source for royalty-free videos. Uh, and, get, and again, you know, you can add background music to your to your slide deck. Um, I do recommend if you're going to use uh, background music, make sure that the music doesn't drown out your voice, and also make sure that the music is appropriate for your presentation for your audience, uh, not just your favorite song that you want to add to your presentation. This kind of gives segue into um, recording our presentation because at some point once you have your slide deck together you have all your resources um, then you're going to need to record your presentation um, while you narrate so you're gonna we're gonna be talking about audio recording hardware screen capture software and even some video recording hardware because there'll be instances when you want to add some live video to your uh, presentation um, sort of like you saw at the very beginning of this presentation Everybody hates poor audio, and that's just not a, a statement that I'm flinging out there. It's it's so true. If I hear a podcast or I hear some sort of audio that is just poor audio, static in the background, maybe um, not very clear, honestly, I don't want to listen to it. And again, you're pulling the focus away from uh, from teaching and from communicating. So it's very important to invest and get a good mic. Now there's some, there's some decent mics out there, uh, that are USB mics that plug right into your computer. Uh, mics by blue uh, are very decent. I've used the Yeti before. I've never used the snowball. Um, but they're decent mics. They, they record very crystal clear, uh, and they, they have good audio. Now you can get, um, very expensive, and go to the uh, other side of the spectrum and get extreme and and uh, purchase something like the Heil PR40, which is um, a very high-end microphone. Um, I know some bloggers that use this particular mic. Uh, or you can get something in between, like for instance, the mic that I'm using right now, it's a Shure mic. Uh, I do have a, a mixer that plugs into my computer. And obviously that's another piece of hardware that you would need. I'm not gonna get into all the um, the aspects of how to, how to connect your microphone to a mixer uh, that goes into your computer, but just know that um, you would need a mixer as well as a sound card on your computer to get the sound from the mixer into your computer. Um, and again, it's going to take a little bit more money and effort, but the sound quality is beautiful. Okay, so here's another option for you. So there's some times where I am recording video away from my computer and I don't have access to my uh, Shure mic with my mixer. And so another option is to use an audio digital recorder. Okay, so this is just an example of one. This is a Roland R05. You'll notice the two mics at the top and some audio digital recorders allow you to plug in a lapel mic as well. This is great when you're traveling or recording audio away from the office. In fact, uh, in the intro part of this presentation, uh, I was actually using uh, an audio digital recorder to record my voice because I was not right next to my computer. These devices, they record uh, excellent audio. Uh, the audio is uh, super clear. So I do recommend uh, an audio digital recorder when you are away from the office. 
screen capture software is an important component of the presentation because this is where you're going to capture your keynote or your PowerPoint presentation uh, into a movie file, which then you will be able to embed. And the best part about it is you will get to uh, narrate uh, the presentation. Um, and why is this a big deal? Well, for instance, let's just think about it for a second. Let's just say that you created a slide deck in PowerPoint and then you used a service like SlideShare, um, which allows you to take your PowerPoint slides, upload them into SlideShare, and then SlideShare actually makes, turns that presentation into an embeddable presentation uh, that you can place on your website. The only problem is, is you were getting slides with uh, just a few words or images, um, but you're not getting the audio component or the narration of that presentation, which is so important. This is why recording a presentation, I, I believe, surpasses just taking a PowerPoint and embedding it somewhere. I know when I go to events, um, people record their, their slide decks, you know, they'll upload them to SlideShare, and then at the very end, they send out a URL where you can download the slides, which is great, but you miss a lot of the the, the nuggets and the, and the information that's um, communicated when they narrate their, their presentation. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now and <laughs> we'll talk about some screen capture software. My favorite, obviously, is ScreenFlow because I am a Mac user. Um, ScreenFlow is great for, for recording your presentations. The cool thing I like about ScreenFlow as well, I actually use this to edit regular uh, live video that I record and it does a really good job of it. There's tons of effects and um, it's a very reasonable price. Another really good screen capture software is Camtasia. Now Camtasia is for, is for either Mac or Windows. Um, I just prefer ScreenFlow on the Mac, but Camtasia is a great option. I've used it on Windows and it, and it does a superb job as well. There will be some instances where you'd like to incorporate some live video into your presentation and you can record that video with a DSLR camera or perhaps a webcam. Some computers like my MacBook Air or my iMac, they have built-in uh, webcams which, which actually shoot very decent video. Uh, or you can use the DSLR, kind of like I did at the very beginning of this video. Um, that was actually my Canon uh, T3i that shoots video and it, and it does a really good job with that as well. Now, one really great option is uh, using your iPhone or your um, Android device. Uh, they, they actually record very decent video. In fact, they, they have microphones um, that will extend off uh, the actual phone um, and they record excellent audio. They shoot decent video. They have little tripods. You can even get a little LED floodlight and uh, you basically have a little studio. In fact, I think we should make a uh, uh, an entire post on how to create a little uh, mini studio with your mobile device. And finally, it comes down to the point where we just need to click record and get your voice recorded and get your slide deck recorded and put it all together. But wait just a second. I wanna give you a quick checklist that will mentally prepare you so that when you hit record, your presentation will be nice and smooth. Okay, so I know this sounds so cliche. I know, I know, I know. But the reality is, if you know your content, you will be able to deliver a clear, concise presentation. And essentially, you won't have to do much editing after you record the presentation because you will make less mistakes. Trust me, this is a big one. I, I, I can't stress this enough. In fact, it's funny because I've done several presentations where I'll sit in my living room giving the presentation to my wife or even my dog, and I'm sure they get sick and tired of hearing the presentation over and over, but practice is essential. By far, it's the best thing you can do for a good presentation. Get some inspiration. Um, I don't know about you, but when I see or I hear something inspiring, I get inspired to do something great. Getting inspiration before a presentation can have a positive influence on your presentation. Um, there's, a, there's a racing video that I love to watch by Ken, Ken Block where he drives an 800 horsepower Mustang through the streets of LA. And after watching that video, I get some serious inspiration. So um, honestly, I didn't watch it before this presentation. And now that I think about it, I should have. I probably would have a ton of more energy, but that's all right. We're doing pretty good. What I like to recommend is that you go through each slide and only take about 30, 20, well, 20 to 30 seconds on the slide. Um, again, you need to keep the slides moving to keep your audience focused or else 
yeah, your audience will lose focus. Um, it's funny, we have such short attention spans, so definitely need to keep your presentation uh, moving forward. Otherwise, <laughs> you will experience the squirrel syndrome. Make sure that you use some energy, okay? Whether it means you chug down your favorite energy drink or maybe you do 25 jumping jacks, I don't know what you do. Get a little jazzed up about your presentation, okay? Do whatever it takes. It's hard to motivate a person if you yourself are not motivated. One thing that is very important when you're, when you're doing your presentation is to focus on the learning goals. Remember, you're teaching something and the objective is for your students to learn. So make sure that you are communicating the learning objectives throughout your presentation. And one, one thing that's just important, at least I, I really look for this in presentations, is be real. Include life examples, okay? Don't, don't just use textbook examples. Textbook examples are great for teaching, don't get me wrong. Uh, but when it comes down to it, real life examples are what people are going to experience, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for, for learning what's going to happen in real life, okay? Another thing <laughs> goes along with being real is don't be stiff, monotone, or you're going to end up putting somebody to sleep, okay? Remember... This is your presentation. Have some fun. Enjoy it. Teaching is fun. Learning is fun. Learning is, is not a drudgery. Keep it short. Um, your presentation should not last more than 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops, um, especially if you're, if you're creating multiple presentations or multiple video presentations for your course. You don't want them to be very long. Chunk it. Chunk your information. Create short segments. If you have um, a particular topic you're going to talk about, just create a single presentation on that one topic. Um, and, you know, it could be a five, 10 minute topic. And then in your next unit or module, you can create a video that's talking about a, a related topic, but different topic. Um, and that way you, again, you can keep the focus of your audience. And uh, <laughs> that's right. You will not experience the squirrel syndrome. Okay. So I got a couple bonus tips for you. One cool bonus tip, um, and I, I've not done it in this particular presentation, but I, I like I like it when people sometimes do a recap. Okay, so if you have a lot of slides in your slide deck, sometimes it's really cool to you know go five to ten slides and then do a recap, kind of just what did we just cover? Um, that reinforces obviously rep repetition aids learning, and so doing a recap kind of uh, is kind of a, a method for doing that repetition. Another bonus tip. Uh, is to provide resources. Since since your e-learning presentation is really meant to teach concepts, you don't want to include extreme details of the lesson in the presentation, okay? If you notice on my slides, I didn't have, you know, technical aspects of everything. I didn't list all the technical features of cameras, etc. cetera. Um, so what would be a good idea, though, is create a downloadable resource guide or perhaps an action guide or, or some definitions to define some of the terms that were explained in a document that's downloadable. Any downloadable resource will enhance the student's learning experience. So, and, and again, the, the, the downloadable resource is just going to be complementary to your presentation. Okay, this is, a, this is a huge one, okay? Bonus tip number three, a call to action. In any type of presentation you do, the ultimate objective is to teach something. And the best way to give the viewer that experience is to give them some sort of call to action. This could be giving them an assignment to work on or perhaps a resource to obtain and review or, or, or the next step to follow in a sequence of lessons. Always drive your students to some sort of action. It will most certainly enhance their learning experience. Okay. <laughs> Now that you have planned, recorded, edited, and produced your presentation video, we need to deliver that presentation somehow. Okay, I know the image is not relevant on screen, and I know it did talk, I did talk about uh, making sure that your images are relevant to the presentation, but for some reason, when I thought of delivery, I thought of a paper boy for some reason. I don't know why. So then I Googled it. I Googled it into Google Images, and of course, this picture popped up. I used to love playing this game on the Nintendo when I was a kid. So see how easy it is to have a scroll moment? Okay, so here's your options. And, and there are other options, but these are three of my favorite options. You have YouTube, Vimeo, and AWS. And there are various options um, for hosting your video, but the two main things to keep in mind when, you, when it comes to video is security and cost. Okay, YouTube is free, but you can't protect your video by any means, okay? You can set up a private video, but then you end up having to grant individual access 
Um, and I think you're only limited to so many uh, people that you can give access to. And there's no way to automate that, okay? And so it's, it's a pain to deal with. So, so if you're just interested in cost, you don't care about security, YouTube's your guy. Um, YouTube, you can upload uh, video to your heart's content. Um, it's just not gonna, it's not a good secure method. Vimeo has great security options. However, you must have a premium version of Vimeo for the additional security. And I believe if you have the free account, you can only upload so many gigabytes per week. Uh, so there's some limitations on that as well. Okay. Now, Amazon Web Services has a uh, service called S3, which is um, a very inexpensive hosting or cloud storage for your videos. Um, in fact, um, we have a product that works hand in hand with S3 to protect your videos called S3 Media Maestro. And so AWS could be a very, very good solution. It has both the security and it's inexpensive as well. Um, but whatever you choose, whatever you, whatever you choose to use, uh, just make sure that you understand how security works and understand the pricing behind it as well. And here is the website for s3mediamaestro.com just in case you are interested. Okay, so now that you've got your video on some sort of cloud storage, uh, the, the final really last step is to add the video to your WP Courseware unit. And then you have successfully created um, what most people call evergreen content because that content can be played over and over again. Um, you basically put in the hours to create uh, content um, that can be reused over and over and over again, which is a beautiful thing. Your presentation can be watched over and over and does not require a live presence. You don't need to be there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the idea be, behind Evergreen. Um, any one of these services like YouTube or Vimeo, uh, or if you decide to use S3 Media Maestro, all have options for providing an embed code to place the video onto your course unit or even on your website. If you want to put it into a post or a page, you can do that. However, we're kind of trying to keep it in context of WP Courseware. So uh, you can absolutely add these videos into your course unit. All right, now it's your turn. And that concludes this presentation on how to create an e-learning presentation that doesn't suck. Thanks for watching, guys.